was it was just this relentless wave of defense to offense for you all, and then they weren't able to reciprocate that on the other end. Uh, how did you manage to control the game flow where it was, you know, you're on runouts, but they weren't getting anything in transition? Yeah, um, just kind of locking in on the defensive end. Um, you know, once we kind of got going a little bit there, um, we kind of found a little bit of a rhythm. Um, we were able to get out in transition, get some easy baskets. Um, and, you know, once we kind of got to our, you know, game plan and the way that we wanted to kind of attack them on offense, um, we started to kind of find, you know, more rhythm. So uh, that kind of worked for us in the in that first quarter. Dub, you ended up almost in the 100 level there <laughs> there behind the basket. Yeah, because pushed me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, tell me about that moment and then just some, some of the other sort of electric moments uh, tonight that you guys were able to, to put together and um, kind of rev up the energy. I don't remember what happened before that. Did I get a, was that the, it was the block I, sequence? Oh, yeah, I think just trying to find energy throughout the game. We came out really flat to start the game, and we were, we were giving up, like, open threes and straight line drives. So a lot of that was just trying to, like, find some type of spark defensively. And, uh, you know, everybody is kind of on the same page as, like, when our offense isn't flowing the way we'd like, defense is something that you can control. And just trying to find a spark that way and change ends the way we want to. And I think that was that was kind of it. And with the defense, more specifically, Dub, obviously you guys have been without your center rotation. Your backup, backup, backup center and, and Alex is missing tonight. Just describe the challenge to, to keep up the defense there and, and I guess your activity and how you were involved in it. Uh, I think it just makes us play harder because we know what we're missing. And Mark's been big on like not harping on like what we don't have and like what we're still very elite at as a team. And that's something that we as a team is just kind of bonded over. Like, like teams still have to guard us and we can still be very effective defensively. So um, just trying to find that line of like what makes us good regardless of if we have bigs or not. And I'm, I want to read you this quote from, from Mark. He says, when you have a guy like him out there doing that, that checks a lot of boxes. He was just talking about your activity tonight. I just wonder if you could describe kind of the, the well-rounded player you've become. He's, he's thrown that term out there a lot and, and how that maybe helps with these kind of lineups. I just try and play hard. Is that a bad answer? No. I just try and play hard and then let my game do the rest of the thing. Like we have a lot of good players on our team. So I just try and go out there and make an impact, whether it be defensively, um, I'm starting to like understand how to get to like certain spots on the floor whenever I need to offensively. So I know a lot of that will come, but I think it's just trying to be as consistent as possible, night in and night out, playing hard and letting like the rest of the game just kind of take care of itself. Wiggs, you were part of that group in the first quarter that really got you guys going. Uh, what did you like? What did you feel like was working well for you guys um, in the first? Um, just our energy. On the defensive end, um, kind of having that approach to find a, a sense of energy and, and you know bring any boost to the team that we could. So um, I thought that group kind of came in and uh, you know just picked up the level of physicality, the level of you know hard work, and um, just just kind of picked up the energy in that aspect. Dub, you had your your big play with the tip off there. Can you take us through your emotions and uh, what were uh, you won the second one? Mm. And then what were the, what were the tips that Jay Will gave you? Uh, oh yeah, I, I, yeah. I told him that I would say. No. Ah, dang. Um, the higher ups tell me not to say, but uh, it's like a. This is pretty obvious. It's like a timing thing. I like barely won the second one. I think Trey. I don't think he's ever jumped center ball either. So, kind of had that going for me. Um, I don't know. My arms are long. That's really all it was. Uh, and then the I didn't really I didn't think I was gonna win the one to start the game, so I just kind of was hoping for the best. But I wasn't close on that one. So Shay, the the fast break point numbers, the points off turnover numbers, and just the disparity there really uh, out of control tonight in terms of your dominance there. Uh, how does it feel to sort of be doubling down on your strengths the way that you are as a team right now? Yeah. Um this part of the season is about building muscles, um, building habits, playing a certain way so that um, you get to a, a point in the season where you really need to win games, you really want to win games. Um, 
all the things that are built in and their habits at that point. You don't have to think, it just happens. Um, and that's what we try to accomplish every night. It's more so about that than results. You and Dub both had some moment of truth opportunities at the rim, massive rejections uh, right there at the summit. Uh, what was that moment like for you uh, and as you continue to just rack up steals and blocks? Um, yeah, I just try to make a play. I feel like he was going to dunk on me if I didn't try to make a play. Um, so I kind of had no choice. Shay, with, with these starting lineups, uh, these past two games, I, for the record, who's the who's the tallest in the lineup? Um, I'm probably taller than Dub, but uh, I, I know he doesn't probably like that, so Dub can be the tallest. And you, you were talking the other night about this part of your development, uh, you know, just trying to do a better job of putting guys in positions to, to be more successful in the playoffs, those, those type of things. I guess what opportunity do you see here in these next few weeks to kind of work on that and, and put those guys in those positions? Yeah, um, I see that opportunity every night. Uh, it's an identity that we want to play with, I want to play with. Um, and it involves the whole team, involves ball movement, involves being aggressive. Um, and every time, every opportunity I can, I try to make sure that my teammates are aggressive and assertive in whatever spot they are in offensively. Um, and whether that's me empowering them without the ball or with the ball, um, I try to do so. Um, but yeah, I see that opportunity every night for the rest of the season for sure. Dub talked about getting out of here and just kind of being a little flat and getting think obviously it's the third game in four nights. Um, you have a nice mix of veterans and young guys coming off the bench. I mean, do you still feed off of that whenever those guys get in there and it just kind of wakes you up a little bit, perks you up a little bit? Yeah, we have a, a room full of guys that competes really hard, um, know how we want to play and try to impose the will every night. And, and we just try to take it minute by minute, play by play. Um, with that mentality, we give ourselves, I guess, like like we give ourselves versatility in lineups. Um, like the way we see it, like it doesn't really matter who's out there. Everyone's out there trying to accomplish the same mission. Um, I think that's what makes us so good and versatile. In first quarter, Casing or Kenrich on the defensive end seemed to get you guys going with his effort and everything. And then in the third quarter, it seemed to be Casing. Just what did you see from those guys and what did you like? Yeah, um, those two were just, they, they were themselves tonight. Uh, they make the defense uncomfortable. Um, they get into guys, pressure the ball. Both have really good instincts defensively, really good hands. Um, they just did their part for sure. And consistency is something that you guys want to play with every single night. But with guys being out, so many guys being out, does, does, it, does it feel like those things like that need to be a little bit more consistent? Or play, um, sorry, play with a little bit more consistency? Yeah, absolutely. Um, there's challenges that present, present themselves. Um, and it, you can either rise to it or let it beat you. Um, we try to obviously rise to them. We try to not use them as excuses. Um, and, and with disadvantages comes advantages. Um, so we like to focus on the advantages and try to impose our will in that way. You talked about the other night about before Chet, you didn't play with a lot of traditional bigs. Going back to your first season here, how do you feel like that three-man or three-guard group of you, CP3 and Schroeder, kind of helped you develop, I guess, the game plan to play with more guards like now? Yeah, um, yeah uh, it helped a lot. We uh, had so many like points of attack, ways to attack, um, like ways to hurt the defense, get in the paint, um, kind of where the NBA is now today, like multiple ball handlers, multiple drivers, shooters, guys that can do a lot of things on the court. Um, so yeah, it just like molded my game for what it is today. And then you talk about consistency. Do you have any pregame routines or like rituals or superstitions that you have? Um, I eat an apple every day before the game. 
I like apples though. I don't know if that's like a. There's nothing to it besides I just like it. Um, that's about it. I tape my ring finger. My wife. That's about it. Red or green apple? Macintosh apple. It's both. It's red and green. Yeah. Thank you, Chef. Great question. Mark, the, the steady stream that you just had all night of defense to offense, running in transition, but then not allowing that on the other end, how did you guys kind of get locked into that groove and, and not veer from it? Well, I thought the best thing tonight was uh, after the start we got off to, which I thought – uh, we weren't very physical, um, pretty casual, to be honest. Um, the group that went in there subbed in early. Those four guys amped up the intensity of the game, Oos, K. Rich, Wiggs, and um, AJ. And um, they changed the total tone of the game, and then we sustained that pretty much throughout. Um, and I thought just our ability to quickly recognize that we're not where we need to be and then have guys step up and get us there and then everybody else sustain that throughout the night I thought was very encouraging. Mark, uh, just how how valuable is AJ going to be his archetype through this stretch where you know you're playing small? He's valuable, anyways. You know he's got great um, skill. He's got um, great intelligence. You know not just instincts but intelligence. He knows everything that's going on on the court, uh, and he's a competitor. He competes on both ends of the floor and you know, dug out another ball tonight um, that a big brought down near him, sticks his chest on people despite, you know, having a rookie body right now. Uh, he's been very impressive. And I mean, we've, we've talked about turnovers and disruption really being the, the root of that all year, but what is it the system teaches about possessions that maybe leads to that disparity from, from the turnovers you cause to the turnovers you end up committing? We're not overly focused on the outcome of turnovers or lack thereof on offense. It's more, um, you know, physicality and force. You know, we want to be physical on defense and play forceful on offense. And uh, when you do that, you know, you are the aggressor on a given possession. But everybody, you know, the lead, everybody's trying to do that every possession. So it's a battle sometimes. But I thought we played with um, better force in the second half offensively. I thought we were a little sluggish in the second quarter, especially on offense. Uh, and our physicality from, you know, 42 minutes on was really, really good tonight. Despite some of the limitations you have in your bigs, uh, I just keep on noticing that your minutes management, probably something that you're really looking into, it really doesn't change that much. So I'm sure there's a temptation to maybe give somebody a little more, that maybe you can give them some more minutes being at the big spots. But you seem to keep things pretty level, even though you have some major injuries at that I position. I mean, it's, you know, we never want to have injuries, but when we do, uh, we look at it as an opportunity, um, and it's a long season. You know, we have 70 games left, so um, you know we're we're trying to win every single game and fully compete in every single game. But we have to understand um, that it's a marathon of a season, uh, and manage the team as such. And it checks both boxes. It checks, as, uh, you know, obviously a physical box for our higher minute guys, and it also allows us to give opportunities to guys that may not have them uh, when we have guys out. In that first quarter, Kenrich seemed to get you guys going with his defense, and everybody followed suit. In that third, it seemed to be Kaysen, and everybody followed suit. What does it say about you guys that it doesn't have to be the the stars, quote unquote, that gets you guys going, and, and everybody else follows suit? It's the stars will are willing to follow everybody else in times that you guys are now. Yeah, I mean, we definitely don't you know differentiate stars. You know, everybody is is. Um, has the full opportunity to impact the team inside the role that they're on. And everybody's gained a ton of respect as a result of that. Cambridge is the longest standing, him and Lou, member of that club. I thought he really lifted the energy of the game tonight. He went in there, him and AJ went in there um, with great intensity. Wiggins, Oost, like I said, those guys were really, they amped up the physicality of the game. They changed the total tone. Um, and then Kaysen, I thought after defensively in the first half, I didn't think he was quite himself. Uh, in the third quarter, he was outstanding. He went to another level as well, which again is a skill. You're never going to stay. It's hard to stay at an optimal level, um, a level of excellence for 82 games in all of your minutes. But the recognition when you're not either as an individual or as a team, and then the ability to get on that in game uh, is a skill. And Kaysen did that tonight. Our team did that tonight. Follow up on that, with especially with Kaysen and um, remaining that consistent level, how much 
is that consistency for you guys going to be important? I know you want to play consistent no matter what, but with missing so many guys, just how much more important is that going to be for you guys? As it's important all the time. You know, we want to be a team that's in character. You know, we want to um, play to our strengths as a team, compete together as a team. We want our players uh, to get to that level every single night and to be incredibly consistent with um, our system, our compete level, our team orientation, uh, and then our individual games. And um, we have a group of guys that do a great job of that. And regardless of what the circumstances are, we want to do that. A lot of times when talking about rookies and, and new players, the common theme is that you got to wait till the book's out on them and then they have to make an adjustment. In your experiences, how long does it take for a book or adjustments to come? For them to adjust to us? For, for, yeah, for another team to adjust to one of your rookies. It depends on the guy's role, you know. It depends on uh, how featured they are, you know. So, um, if if there's a rookie that's like a prominent, you know, head of the snake type player, it uh, the league adjusts very quickly. And um, if the role is more limited, then it may take a little bit longer. But eventually, you know, the league adjust. You know, AJ Mitchell went in the game against the Clippers the other night, and their staff was up yelling the game plan on AJ Mitchell so it doesn't take long um, but that's welcome that's how you develop that's how you improve you know is the league plays you a certain way you learn what that is and then you come up with the tools to adapt to that and the best players are the ones that can continue to clear those hurdles as you know different pitches get thrown you had seven blocks tonight obviously missing some of your best shot blockers can you just kind of talk about the rim protection specifically I thought the pressure, you know, it starts there, you know, the defensive pressure um, on the perimeter. It speeds up the possession. Um, it gets guys into their gathers and into their steps earlier, which allows you to time up blocks. Um, and then I thought we had our nose in the rim tonight after the first six minutes. You know, those first six minutes we didn't. They were kind of slicing through us. Uh, and then for the last 42 minutes, we were really competitive and physical at the rim. And it doesn't take size to be competitive and physical. And we want to be a competitive and physical team, regardless of who's on the floor. Mark, Shay was in here the other night saying something along the lines of he felt that, you know, after you guys lost in the, in the playoffs, that he could have done a better job throughout the year of uh, preparing his teammates for certain positions, things, things of that nature. Um, just what opportunity does he have during this next, these next few weeks, and, and specifically tonight, to, to kind of put those guys in some of those positions? I don't know exactly what he said, but um, what I would say is, like, players that are great players, and he is a great player, they graduate to a point where um, their greatness is reflected not only in their individual play, but in how they impact their team. And um, he's, a, he's still a young player, but... Um, He's made that shift over time. You know, this isn't like the first day he woke up thinking about something like that. Um, he's always been kind of team centered and team focused. And um, there comes a time where great players are evaluated by how their team plays, not just how they play individually. And he's thrusted himself into that category with his individual play. And um, to his credit, embraces that, leans into it. It's a testament to his maturity at, at a young age. He's, he's taken these past couple games, combined 46 shots. Is there an expectation for you there? Do you get a sense that th these next few weeks will kind of demand that sort of output? Yeah, I just, from my standpoint, I just want everybody to take what the defense gives them. You know, so he obviously has the ball a lot. Um, you know, if he's got 46 quality shots in two games, we want him to shoot them. And if he doesn't, we want him to pass. You know, and that's the same for everybody. That's, that's not individualized to anyone. And I just kind of get an instant reaction from you. So I know you're going to look at the tape and you'll have a better answer probably later on, but you're out rebounded quite a bit, like over 20, 31 to 58. Is this a concern to you at all? Or, I mean, does the final score just kind of show that you guys have a formula to kind of get over that? Yeah, it's the same stuff we talked about last year with the rebounding, which is, you know, we never go in saying, man, we'd love to get out rebounded by 20 tonight. You know, we're trying to compete on the glass, but there are natural trade-offs that you have when you play smaller. And obviously we're playing smaller right now. And we want to be a team that can offset our vulnerabilities with our strengths. And I think sometimes you get tempted from a coaching standpoint to focus on all the things that are going wrong. But sometimes the solution is to do your best stuff better. And I thought that's what we did tonight. We pressured more. We won more closeouts. We played faster. You know, we put them in closeouts, you know, against skilled players and created space on the floor. And um, oftentimes, if you have good players, which we do, your strengths can, can outweigh your vulnerabilities. And that's what we try to focus on. 
We've seen the phrase of positionless basketball come up more and more. You guys th throw out five guards, a few forwards. Is it less about just positions and more about just filling certain roles if you need a point of attack, defender, rim protector, and things like that? Yeah, and it's not like one player with one role. You know, I think the beauty of our team is we have a lot of versatile players. I mean, you guys haven't asked about Dub yet, but like that guy was everywhere at night, you know, literally everywhere. I mean, there's nothing on the court he didn't do tonight. He guarded the ball, he guarded the rim, he blocked the shots, he ran, he created plays, he made shots. He, you know, ran, you know, down, beat everybody down the floor on both ends. I mean, the energy that guy played with and competitiveness. So when you have a guy like him out there doing that, it checks a lot of the boxes, you know. And we have a lot of guys that, chill, that check a lot of the boxes. Shea plays both ends of the floor. Wiggins is multi-positional. Lou, obviously, you know, can do a lot of different things on both ends of the floor. And even A.J., Isaiah, Joe are slighter guys, but those guys compete, you know. And so it's never like one skill with one player. We encourage all our guys to play to all their strengths, and a lot of our players have a lot of strengths. Thank you, Coach. Yep, thanks. thanks.